Wisconsin Eye's 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high quality, high value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin Eye is interviewing candidates in the 2014 elections. We're interviewing Kathleen Cummings of Waukesha. She's a, she's a Republican running in the 97th Assembly District. Kathleen, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. Uh, programming note, Wisconsin Eye appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems for making these candidate interviews possible. Um, Kathleen, we generally start out with an overview of your bio. Now, I know you've been a local elected official, so give us the short overview of your bio and maybe the top one or two issues that you found in your campaign. Well, the, a little bit. Oh, yes, I'm a little nervous here. I've not done this That's fine. on camera very Take often. You'd think I'd get used to this after all these years. But anyways, well, the short view is that I've been an elected official for the last 15 years and a member of the Waukesha community for 36 years. And that poises me to be in a good position of really understanding the issues and concerns of the 97th. Okay. Uh, I have served on the Public Works Committee at the County of Waukesha, Health and Human Services, uh, what we used to formally call personnel, judiciary and law enforcement, and actually emergency management. Uh, all those positions and the positions I hold at the city have been educational, uh, have been educational, has put me in a position to work for the residents of the 97th. You know, when I talk to someone who's a veteran local official, I like to ask this question. Sure. Impact of Act 10, uh, bad, good? It has, it has been actually a godsend. Um, it has really helped us with our budget. It's, it is, uh, it's helped us move forward and to address our local issues. Okay. Um, and when you talk to voters in the 97th, what, what do they identify as the top one or two issues, please, ma'am? Well, in the 97th um, issue, the top three issues are the water of City of Waukesha. Uh, wa we are we are in the midst of a water application to the five Great Lakes, yes. the provinces of uh, Canada, and um, and that's in the hands of the DNR and it's moving forward. But that is the number one issue for the city of Waukesha. Now let's and talk about that a little bit. Okay. Somebody's coming after the city of Waukesha water, right? Somebody wants it. Do I understand this? No, correctly? we want we we want we're trying to find a renewable source. Okay, you, uh, city of Waukesha. I'm, I apologize for getting that reversed. Right. Sorry. Waukesha needs a new water source. Right. And you'd like to get it from where? We've, we've made an application to the five Great Lakes. Okay. We have a Great Lakes application in presently. Okay. And it's moving forward. We're working very hard and diligent for that. And that's it's, something that you as a, both a uh, county and a city official is working hard to, to As to, a city official, forward. I voted for it. It's absolutely critical to the city of Waukesha okay. and, uh, and its future. Okay. Okay, so they, uh, the voters want to talk about water and you give them how hard you're working for right. it. And then the second, the second thing are jobs. There are so many people that are out of work or have been displaced either through age or, or maybe a, a, through streamlining. Their jobs no longer exist. So, you know, I'm 100% supportive of uh, Governor Walker's position of, of Wisconsin's open for business and doing everything we can to promote jobs. I believe streamlining is, is the way to go forward on that. You know, get rid of, have government get out of the way and have less regulation. Is there a third issue you want to highlight issue, before we hi talk about specific yeah, issues? Yeah, I'm trying to. That's third okay. issue would be um, taxes. Uh, part of my job as an elected official at the city of Waukesha is trying to find ways, every budget I look for ways to how I can reduce taxes, make a difference so that we have to ask less from them. That's my authority as an elected official. I levy taxes. It's an unpopular thing to do, but that's what makes government work. Mm -hmm. So um, I look at the position is that I, I look at how I can get rid of anything that's not necessary. What is not a core service as far as what don't we have to spend the money on? Um, particularly recently in the city of Waukesha I reduced uh, one of the department's budget by $33,000 and um, because I didn't think it made sense. So I've actually done the work on how 
I could make changes to reduce taxes. I've actually brought, um, there I go on again. I should let you talk. Well, so. I just, I, I just said, as you're aware from watching a couple of these interviews, I, I do have a, a issues yes. question. So let's yes. talk about schools. Yes. A big issue in the next state budget will be school vouchers. Yes. The vouchers were expanded statewide with a cap of 1,000 in the current state budget. Uh, your position on school vouchers and whether we should continue to expand them statewide? I'm for uh, school choice, and the voucher system is a part of that. Now, I don't. I do have a position where I don't think we should do everything all at once, like slow and steady. Let's see how it works. Let's measure it. Let's see if it's money well spent. You know. But I do believe in the choice factor. Would you remove the one thousand uh, cap that's in, in the current budget uh, outside the cities of Milwaukee and? Racine? To increase it? Yeah. To increase it, I think we need to just st stay with the thousand, see how it okay. continues to work. It hasn't been really in place that long. Right. And I think we need to give it some measure of accountability. Okay. And once the accountability is established, then we can look at that. And uh, last week, uh, Governor Walker asked that uh, lawmakers uh, withdraw from the Common Core educational standards. Do you have a position on that, ma'am? Yes, I, I would agree that would we agree. need to remove ourselves from it. I found it interesting that it only took one person to make that decision. And um, I would hope that something that would impact the state of Wisconsin so dramatically, there would have been more um, opportunities for conversation and checks and balances. But that's not the system we have right now. You and I, uh, different subject, you and I know how important highways are to, to Waukesha County going east, west, things like that. Yes. Yet there's a projected $650 million deficit in the next Department of Transportation budget. Do we delay some of these major projects? The zoo freeway is well started. Do we raise taxes or do you have other ideas on how to make up that deficit? Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. Okay. Um, we need to look at the need and maybe look at how, you know what projects are happening with the, with them locally at the time. There might be uh, savings to scale when you do a certain project in one location and there's another one partnering at the same time. You need to prioritize, prioritize, and um, and look for opportunities where you can can collaborate and get things done at a, a, a at a better price. And to also um, get the job done because we need the good roads for to be open for business. Is it not the time to raise either the gas tax or what you and I pay for license plates, the $75? No, we're still in the, in the middle of the recession. We're trying to get out of it. Okay. Uh, the the, the gas tax is being hurt both by the recession where people aren't able to go and drive a far away to go and see all the great things Wisconsin holds and also our cars have become more energy efficient. So. We just need to take the steady approach. Um, two years ago, the federal government told all states, if you expand your MA benefits to low income, we will pay the cost of that expansion for the first few years. Now, as you know, Governor Walker and leaders of the Assembly and Senate said, thanks, federal government, no thanks. Do you think that was the right call? It's been my experience as both a, a local and elected uh, county official that oftentimes the federal government provides us with opportunities with monies but with lots of strings attached that at the end of the day then we pick up the tab and um, sometimes it's just better to say no and um, take care of ourselves because it's about um, it's about local control and I think in this particular case the governor said no we want to th this is best for Wisconsin and I support his decision. The Attorney General as you know is appealing Judge Crabb's ruling on same-sex marriage. Yes. Do you have an opinion? Uh, wh what, wh what's your reaction to Judge Crabb's ruling? Well my reaction is right now is that as an elected official I've had to um, say that I've sworn to uphold the state of the state of Constitution, the state of Wisconsin, and as such, I su I support the process. The G the the Attorney General has gone through his process. The courts are going with that, their process, and at the end of the day, um, it will be decided. And then after that, what will happen is that we, the people, will then make another decision because I'm sure whatever the outcome is, the people will then decide what they 
want to do moving forward. Some candidates are offering their personal uh, uh, opinion on same-sex marriage, others are choosing not to. Do you want to express your personal opinion? No, because as an elected, they, uh, there's only one other candidate that's elected official. And uh, what I would say that right now I'm in the position of upholding the state of Wisconsin's Constitution. Okay. And it doesn't matter what my opinion is because I'm sworn to uphold the Constitution. I and I, I look forward to the debate and, and the process. Um, two candidates for Attorney General say first offense drunken driving should be a crime. Your position on that? It's likely to come up in the next session. Um, is it a crime? You know, sometimes this is, people say things and do things that have unintended consequences. We have a fast track program in the in the uh, county of Waukesha, which tries to address drunk driving. Mm -hmm. We're finding that with this particular program in the drug courts and the alcohol courts, it's proven to be effective. And I think at the end of the day. Um, we need to actually stop the repeat offenders, and um, and you know you could maybe look at a higher fine or something of that sort of thing. But it's it's about education, and uh, and I'm not sh I I don't think criminal is the way to go with first offense. Sometimes that's a wake up call. Um, in Washington <laughs> and Madison, there are calls to raise the minimum wage. Do you have a position on that? I do. I do have a position. I believe that it would be, uh, it would be a detriment to, to small business and mid-level business and our whole focus of getting jobs in Wisconsin. I don't think it's the right time. The marketplace decides w when a salary should be raised, and uh, I, I let I believe in the free market. Um, I want to circle back because of your experience as a county and a city official to. Um, to, to local budgeting. Let's talk about property taxes. Yes. Separate from the Act 10 debate, um, the governor and uh, the current budget clamps pretty tight spending on local governments like cities and, and counties. Has it been your experience, has that tight spending clamp hurt local services, Kathleen? It makes it more difficult, but it just it then but but it provides an opportunity for us to look at our operation and do it smarter. Okay. I believe in the lean government principles that Waukesha County is now doing. It's how to look at our operation and do it better. They do this in the private industry, like um, uh, for instance, if you have a health and human service. Uh, department, and then you have veteran service department, you have senior services. Well, now they're looking at their operations and say, well, you know, we don't need to look at that. We don't need to fill out that form twice. That's similar to what we have to do. Mm -hmm. and, and that speaks to the jobs where small business would like us to have less regulation. Sometimes it's how we do our business that costs us money. And, and I think your question was, has it had effect? Yes, it has had an effect, but that allows us also, I look at it as opportunities. Okay. So as we go back and look at it and say, okay, this is how we've done it for eons. How can we do it differently? And in Waukesha County, we're using lean government principles. Well, if you're a member of the assembly next session, voting on the next state budget, do you think the tight fiscal constraints on local government should continue because of the need to control property taxes? That would depend on everything else that's in that budget, sir. Okay. I understand. Because um, that would like be saying that you're going to make a prediction without knowing all the facts. Okay. And um, I think that's a pretty bold statement. I am for decreasing taxes. I'm not for raising taxes. Okay. But all of it is, you. I have to have all the information to make a blanket statement. And I'm not comfortable with making that. I, I appreciate that. My final question is this. The open seat in the 97th has attracted, let me be sure I get the number right, six candidates. You're one of six candidates. Do I have that right? That's right. I actually am number six. You're number six. <laughs> well, here's my question. Do you want to highlight any differences between you and some or all of the other the other five candidates, Kathleen? Well, I'm like I said, I, I am the candidate that has a proven track record. I've been an alderman for the last 13 years, a county board supervisor for 15 years. I've learned a lot about government in, in that span of time and how certain budgets work and how some and, and ideas of how to make things work. I particularly have the experience of being a parent of a special needs 
son. He's 28. And uh, I have learned in my life that things are not always black and white, that they are shades of gray. And what I've also learned from my son is to be an advocate. And I never give up and I never give in. And I keep representing and I keep trying to be an advocate for those residents. And I will still work tirelessly for the for the residents in the 97th. You know, it's it's always been my desire to serve. And um, and it just didn't happen yesterday. It happened when when I was growing up in Tiffin, Ohio and, and seeing my father and grandfather helping people and making a difference. And um, this is not a career choice for me. This is a vocation for me. I want to serve the 97th, and that is why I got in the race. And I wanted to give them a choice of somebody they knew, somebody they could trust, it, and somebody they would know that wor would work for them, not give up, not give in, and to have the conversation. Because what I find now these days is people are doing all of this. They're not talking to each other. And it starts with a conversation because if you're actually listening, you actually hear something that maybe you hadn't heard before and it gives you an idea and then you run with it. Kathleen, thanks very much. Thank Kathleen you. Cummings of Waukesha is a Republican candidate in the 80, I'm sorry, 97th Assembly District. The primary is August 12th. Kathleen, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you so much. Thank you.